Hey, this is John Lee Dumas, the founder and host of Entrepreneurs on Fire. And if you're wanting to learn how to embrace change and navigate through disruption as a leader, then listen to the Leadership is Changing podcast with my good friend, Dennis Giannoutsis. He's prepared to ignite. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Hey, welcome to the show, Leadership is Changing. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Leaders everywhere confront similar obstacles because people are people, but everywhere you go, leaders are overwhelmed, disrupted, and under pressure. They run from email to email, meeting to meeting. Many leaders are not changing quick enough, which means they run the risk of becoming irrelevant and being left behind. The purpose of the show is taking our listeners' leadership to another level by finding their balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. I believe we don't have enough effective leaders in the world today, and if we can get the leaders to step up and lead change, then they can inspire real change. Hey, listeners, it's now time to adapt in our fast-moving world, and I want to welcome you to today's episode, which is a mashup of three wonderful guests. I'm going to introduce you to them very soon, but before I go there, team, hey, if you haven't already checked out the Facebook group or the LinkedIn page, that's two different platforms, the Facebook group or the LinkedIn page. Leadership is changing as the group and the page name. Go ahead and look out for those, and we would love to see you join those different platforms. Hey, I've got three wonderful guests here that I've actually taken little snippets out of their episodes to create this mashup. And the reason I'm bringing these mashups is because it's just to remind you what a wonderful episodes they are and for you to go back and listen to them. And if you haven't even listened to any of these episodes, just sort of give you a little bit of a teaser and understanding on what is being shared. From episode 41, Don Robinson, he's the Chief HR Officer for Northwestern Mutual. And Don's a great guy, sharing some really great wisdom there. Episode 43, Neha Bagaria, she's the founder and CEO of an organization called Jobs for Her. And that's an organization whereby you've got people going back to the workforce after maybe having some maternity leave and so forth and other different scenarios too. And it's jobs for her. Episode 46, Trevor Shaler. In fact, team, I was about to say event 46. It's almost like, you know, with all these Olympics and games on as well at the moment, it's really quite interesting. So episode 46, Trevor Shaler. He's the CEO of Manamutu Sports. He is an Olympian in 1992. And then in 1994, he was in the Commonwealth Games in Canada. He won the bronze medal in boxing. And Trevor shares some wonderful thoughts in relation to leadership. Now, with Trevor's side, I actually started the recording and this mashup up a little bit earlier because he shares some really really, really interesting things. And in particular, because the Olympic Games are happening at the moment, I wanted to sort of give a little bit more insight on what he's sharing in relation to leadership and sports. So team, I'm going to really encourage you to take notes and learn from these different actual mashups, some great insights from our three guests of Don, Neha and Trevor. So sit back and enjoy the mashup. Hey, Don, I've got a question here, which is, who's your favorite leader? Now, this person can be alive or can be from history. Who's your favorite leader and why? Well, let me talk about a leader that I actually got a chance to work with. Um, he's no longer with us, but Jack Welsh, a GE. And let me just say up front, Jack wasn't, wasn't the nicest guy. But the thing I loved about Jack and why I admired him as a leader is there are two things that I think a leader has to have to be, to be really a legacy type leader. One is they have to have a vision they have to be able to see out in front of where their business is going. What do you need to do? You need to be out in front and leading. And one of the things that was, gr- was great about Jack, he was one of the very early CEOs who really understood the power of developing successors and developing a talent pool and having this absolute responsibility as a leader to develop future leaders. But he not only d- had, had, had the vision, he had the, he had the, uh, the, the con- courage of his conviction to execute on it. Jack, you know, if he didn't think you were going to be somebody that could be the next leader, he didn't think twice about moving you to the side or putting you somewhere else. Oftentimes, leaders today, they know the right thing to do, but they don't oftentimes have the conviction and the courage to do it because Uh either they have a relationship, it's a friend, it's somebody in their network, 
somebody's been here a long time. Oh, they deserve the opportunity. Jack was ruthless in his in, in his uh, in his ability to execute against his vision because he always kept in mind the, the 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 ultimate goal, which is to really develop future leaders. And he didn't care where you came from, who you were, what your background was. He kept cared about did you have the the, the skill set and really the capability and so uh i just always admired how he's had how he had that ability and frankly i think it's one of the things that leaders many leaders could be great leaders struggle with they know the right thing to do but do you have the courage to do it yeah and the courage of actually having a conversation making that decision Correct. getting on with it yeah that's right yeah but i think the other thing that i'm sort of picking up as well about jack welsh and what you're saying is whatever he was doing it's it was always consistent Correct. And if you if you've got the courage and the consistent side of things, that that's that's another very powerful tool to to have up in our in our sleeves as well. Yeah. Okay, great. So here's a question for you, and and it's who is your favorite leader? Now this person could be alive or it could be from history. So who's your favorite leader and why? Actually, my favorite leader is Sheryl Sandberg. Uh, in fact, she's one of the reasons why I got inspired to start Job So Her Even. You know, during when I was on a break, I read Lean In. And of course, I saw her TED talk, and then I read her book. And frankly, that's when, I mean, what really struck me about Cheryl was uh, her courage to be so authentic, yeah, and her courage to talk about all the problems, all the challenges, all her fears that she faces, as opposed to try to cover it all up and make it seem that, you know, everything is hunky-dory and everything is so simple. Because then when others read that, you realize that, oh my God, I'm not the only one who feels yeah. this way. Yeah. Because if the CEO of Facebook can have these fears and figure out how to overcome them, then you know what? So can I. And so can so many other women in the world. Yeah, I, I think that's beautiful. Because the thing is, is that she's showing her vulnerability side of things and, and being open there. And I think that's really important for leaders today that we need to be vulnerable. And I think it's a strength that uh, people are showing that they are vulnerable because as you said there, so many people can relate to it. And it also, it more just takes the mask away from that big leader type person to somebody who's human, someone who's like me, someone who's going through the same things as me, as you say, right? So that's, that's great. And it, it's also like a reality check, right? It also makes you realize, yeah. otherwise you feel that, you know, when you're going through all these challenges, you feel like, oh my God, like, you know, the others didn't talk about the challenges. It seems so easy. Like, how is it so difficult? So it's yeah, important no. for people to realize that it is difficult. Nobody's saying this is easy. It's difficult, but it's worth it. Okay, awesome. It is difficult. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Very good. Hey, for you, um, how did you get into leadership? Oh, it's a really good question, um, Dennis. I, um, I I was taking some notes early and I'm thinking, well, how did I get into leadership? And the honest truth is I, I fell into it. And I, when I look back on my career and uh, in my office, I've got one of my photos. And when I was 12 years of age, uh, I was um, the captain of the, the rep team for one or two for softball. I was actually the national champion of uh, in boxing as well, but in in the softball team, that was I was that was the first time that I was in a leadership role in terms of being a being the captain of the team. And I suppose ever since then, I've kind of always had this level of expectation from others around me kind of taking a, a, a lead role. And again, I, like I said, I, I don't think I, it doesn't feel like I, I ran towards it, but it was something that was in front of me quite frequently. So, you know, I, I kind of, you know, and, and when I think about my other parts of my career, when I moved into the health sector, you know, being a young Māori male in, in public health in New Zealand was quite novel. So, right. you know, it was mainly women that did the health promotion type work rather than men. And again, so it thrust me into, you know, again, a leadership role because of the uniqueness of me being in that sector. But because I, because I was boxing and obviously training to go to the Olympics, I spent a lot of time 
being contacted by schools. Schools would ring me and say, oh, Trevor, can you come in and talk to our students about goal setting and, you know, you're, you're off to the Olympics and what's that like? And and I um, really took the, took advantage of that opportunity and went and talked to schools. And I realistically, I developed a lot of skills during those sessions around storytelling and connection and self-awareness and developing my emotional intelligence to try and read the audience. And I think that was a real big grounding for me was – you know, being thrust in front of, you know, groups of people to to tell stories and, and to talk and try and string everything together to try and get to a point to inspire a group of young people that I was in front of. So that's, you know, it's a really cool thing to reflect on in terms of, you know, how, how far I've come, but also how far there is still to go. Yeah, yeah, great. And also influencing so many people as well, because, you know, I love to see what their stories are now yeah. as a result of actually hearing somebody like yourself in the past as well, which would be Pretty interesting to hear. Hey, um, Trevor, you know who's your favourite leader? Now, this this question here is: it could be someone who's alive or from history. So, who's your favourite leader and why? It's a pretty big question because, again, I think it's hard to pinpoint any one individual. Mm-hmm. I think of over the years when I think about you know uh, leaders and mentors and people that have come in and out of my life who I've been able to learn something from or or take something from you know has been quite vast and I've been fortunate you know when I think about you know when the students really the teacher turns up and I've been fortunate that a number of teachers who are leaders uh, have turned up in, in my life and but the person that I'm going to talk about is a guy by the name of Amsta Reedy. Amsta passed away in oh, a few years ago now, in 2012. So uh, what's it? Eight years. His his full name is New Amsterdam Reedy, and uh, he was named after a merchant sea carrier that took the Māori Battalion to the war. And uh, he was the eldest child of 18. And uh, 18. I, uh, 18 children. He was the eldest of 18. Wow. And he um, became my mentor, and I really looked up to him as a, as a leader. He was he was a, an amazing man, both in terms of his cultural knowledge and the depth of his cultural knowledge, but also the way in which he was able to connect through his humility. He was inspiring, but he. You know, he he did so much for me and created so many really, really good opportunities for me. And he was the one that said to me one day, he was correcting me. You know, I'd I'd made a mistake with something and he corrected me. And um, I felt really embarrassed, you know, that that I was being corrected. And he said to me, because he could see that, that I felt a bit of shame and a bit of embarrassment. And he said to me, the way to think about it is, you know, I'm correcting you because I want the best for you. You know, I want you to be better. And ever since then, I've, I've been far more comfortable with getting things wrong. <laughs> I've been yep. far more comfortable with, you know, people uh, providing feedback or providing input into in terms of how I could do things differently or better, you know, and I, I haven't – so that, that hasn't been a, a block or a barrier for me. So, you know, Amster was, uh, he was an incredible um, individual. I mean, I could tell you for stories for, for days, um, Dennis. We, we travelled together overseas. We did some amazing work in the cultural space with the New Zealand Olympic team and different different organisations that he and I both worked for because we ended up working, joining up together and working quite closely on a range of projects that were about health and, and well-being. But when I, mm-hmm. I, I'd be sitting in the room from a cultural perspective and there'll be a cultural piece or a welcome to our our process. And, and Amps is very was uh, amazing in terms of his level of cultural knowledge and understanding of all the rituals and so forth. And he would kick me under the table. I'm not sure if that's very um, leader leadership like, but he'd kick me under the table and go, "Hey," he'd look at me, and I'd look at him, and then, and it, the kick under the table was. It's I'm not gonna that he wasn't gonna stand up. He was kicking me to say, "Hey, can you reply?" And uh, again, there was that that challenge around going, "Oh, okay, okay, oh, it's my turn." He wants you know. And again, when 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 I think about it, he was creating more opportunities for me to stand and show what I was capable of 
but with his support and with him as a safety net to make sure that he was there to catch me if I needed it. And that, to me, that was uh, amazing. Yeah, tremendous. Yeah, so I've been giving you the opportunities to challenge you to get out there and do something different, but also go and do something, but knowing that safety net is there, which is great to have him there as a supporter. Fantastic. Hey, listeners, what a wonderful mashup with my three guests, Don, Niha, and Trevor. Fantastic things that they are sharing. And you know what, Trevor's sharing in relation to a lot of sports and so forth and, and how that's actually helped shape him into being a leader. And of course, the person he has talked about in relation to what they did around the Olympic Games or the New Zealand Olympic and Commonwealth teams and around some different culture side of things as well. So I uh, hope you thoroughly enjoyed that mashup and got some good notes out of it. And if you haven't really joined the Facebook group or the LinkedIn page, Leadership is Changing, we would love to see you there on those two different platforms. All right, listeners, what we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Change is incredibly scary, especially with the unknown and unfamiliar territory. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing. Hey, look out for the episodes as they're being released. Download them, have a listen, put a review and a rating. If there's any of your friends and family and network that you think should enjoy this podcast or these episodes, feel free to go ahead and share this with them. Hey, if there's any feedback you'd like to give me about the show, or if there's any questions you have for my guests as I interview them, or a question for the Ask Dennis Freestyle episode, feel free to send me an email, dennis at leadingchangepartners.com. Listeners, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world. 